Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I'm Emma. Okay, so not Rex. You may have noticed. Not Rex. But Rex isn't feeling well. And we didn't want to get behind on the vault schedule because we got classes coming up and I'm unavailable in big chunks of time. Yeah. So we're shooting anyway, but the nerds have taken over. <laughs> So uh, some things have changed, but I'll walk you through the different stuff. Right now, we're sticking with even the independent things, the rare things. We're mm -hmm. going to review them anyway, even though it's not Rare Whiskey Friday. It's the summer of weird craft things. Mm, all right. Or some yeah. not craft, some craft. It's just whatever's up next in the schedule. And then you get to read comments, a lot of which have to do with Rex. And okay. then we can both make fun of Rex because he's not here to defend Perfect. himself. Perfect. Fair? Fair. Okay. So the one thing that Rex is always reminding me of is uh, don't ignore the entry big flavors just because the, you know they're there and you're used to them and skip yeah. over them and only talk about the obscure yeah. things you're picking up. I'm gonna try to remember that. You just do whatever the hell you want and psalm the shit out of it okay. or blending nose the shit out of it. Fair? Fair. Okay, so I try to keep this very little information so that we can have a true first impression of all these whiskeys. But okay. this one is Broken Fence Bourbon, a single barrel. Oh, oh, you're gonna get to do this part. You ready? The Magnificent Bastard Inc. Okay. So I say this one is from Austin Yount and you grab the bottle and say Austin Yount and then together we'll say you Magnificent Bastard. Okay. It's kind of fun, right? You ready? This is a gift for Magnificent Bastard, Austin Yount. Austin Yount, you, you Magnificent, magnificent Bastard! bastard. Pretty good. All right. Well done. Yeah, well, Magnificent Bastarding high five. All right. Okay, this is, if you look up the label, on the TTB, mm -hmm. this is, because I couldn't figure out anything about this other than that it's Bardstown and the Windship Company. Okay. It's actually, Windship is a company owned by Buffalo Trace. And in theory, this is just Barton. Bardstown? Barton, 1792 Barton. Oh, okay. Right? So, it's just Kentucky bourbon out of the Buffalo Trace Company, sold under the label Broken Fence. It's an exploration of single barrels, and that's really all we know about it. By the way, Austin, uh, I'm gonna give him this one too. You have to say Austin Yount again, because Austin Yount also donated Red River Texas Canadian style whiskey, which we've already viewed, reviewed. Okay. So that makes him a benevolent bastard. Oh, be so, benevolent. You ready for you benevolent bastard? Benevolent. Yeah, benevolent. You benevolent bastard. There we go, all right. Austin Yount, you, you benevolent, benevolent bastard. bastard. So we're not gonna review it, but thank you for the backup bottle. Okay, so there it is, just classic Kentucky bourbon. Yeah. Green grass, say thoughts out loud and don't just think them. Okay. <laughs> what are you smelling? Orange, citrus. Oh, yeah. Like the zest or peel. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. It's kind of grassy. Yeah, I got that grass, almost green, maybe dried cut grass, but not vegetal or sappy. Yeah, um, it doesn't, scream vanilla bomb or anything, mm -mm. but that sweetness is there. It's hefty too. I mean, even at a 47.5%, which is kind of low, 95 proof, this smells big. Yeah, there's kind of like a little bit of a spiciness to it, like a little light black pepper. Yeah. Now, don't, remember, take small sips because we've got six videos to do. Oh, good Lord. Yeah. So just don't, this, just do like you do when you're blending you and you're judging to, like, tasks. Host people later oh, yeah, yeah, for a yeah. thing. Okay. Welcome to the vault shoot day. <laughs> yeah, to me, this is all the direction of more of the herbal bourbons. Yeah. The rye forward, barrel impact heavy, tannic. What else you get? Oh, brown sugar. The classic brown sugar comes out if you go to the top of the glass. It smells like bourbon. Just smells like bourbon. <laughs> that is accurate. <laughs> Mm. And there it is. Brown sugar, cherry cough syrup. The yeah. citrus doesn't show up until at the very end it starts to get kind of zesty it's and nutty. prickly. Like the nutty. skin of a walnut mm. or something. That waxy, mm -hmm. that must be the barrel. Yeah, absolutely. This does seem really 
reminiscent of some of our MGP barrels. It is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, the citrus thing is what took me that direction. Yeah, and the brown sugar. Yeah, much closer to MGP than any other um, uh, Buffalo Trace that I've had. I don't know if you said it was the 1872. I said it's Barton. Yeah. Barton. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I've had that. Do you want to try it? If not, if we have six more whiskeys. <laughs> <laughs> well, just a little sip. Just okay. a little one. Okay. <laughs> Here. I would say it's not bad. It's a good, like, classic bourbon. Mm -hmm. I'd throw this in a cocktail or something and... But you wouldn't, like, go for it neat on a regular basis? Um... Why not? I like my bourbons to have a little more punch to them. Mm. So it's very approachable, especially for a single barrel. It's I mean, softer. sometimes the single barrels have all those rough edges and they're really high proof cash strength. And this is really nice. Mm. And Just so easy drinker, but you like com more complexity. Yeah. In a bourbon. Yeah. Specifically. So I think I would either give this to like, I would drink this with friends who are maybe getting into whiskey oh, okay. and want to show them a single barrel. Okay. Um, a little more complex than just a generic budget bourbon. Yeah. But, but not also a like if I'm at home, I either have my fancy whiskey or my budget, like not budget, but my mixing mm -hmm. or like throw with water or, or a rock or something. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that would fall into this category. Okay. That's fair. I don't know. I don't know. This smells like totally that. different. The, the bottled in bond, Whoa. 1792. Yeah, that's way more herbal and grassy. Way more phenolic even, kind of. Yeah. It's 50, it's only a little bit higher. And Now all the cherry comes out on this. Yeah, I was about to say the orange, cherry, all the candied notes in this, yeah. they all jump to the front. I agree, I don't know why I would pick this one over any other bourbon that I already know and like. Yeah. Because it doesn't do anything new that those aren't already doing. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. This is batch 23 for anyone who's wondering. Now, Rex normally reads comments from the people okay. during this time. I will represent the people. So there you go. Are you representative of the people? I guess so. Okay. Today I am. <laughs> okay. It doesn't say who did it. I know, I couldn't find the name. It was cut and pasted. So if this is your comment, put it in below. Sorry, we missed your name. Okay. Okay, I have a question. I know whiskey does not mature or age in the bottle, but what is it that makes it possible for wine to mature or age in the bottle? Is it the fact that wine is fermented only while whiskey is fermented, then distilled? If someone distilled wine, then bottled it, would it still mature? No, this is the answer to that question. So brandy, those kinds of things also. Distilled spirits, and yes, you really put your finger on the main thing. You know the answer to this. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, which is? Feel free. Don't put me on the spot. Oh. <laughs> I'm new at this. Effectively, you're, you're right. I mean, there's more complexity to it than that, but effectively, you're right. It's the only fermented things can change in a bottle. Beer can go bad, wine can, but what it's happening is, oxygen in the bottle is interacting with the wine, creating new compounds. Things are com uh, coming together, breaking apart, appearing, disappearing. Mm -hmm. And so wine can soften and age. Distilled spirits are just static. And the only thing that happens to distilled spirits over time in a bottle, if, you, if it oxidizes, is things evaporate. And that's how the flavor changes. And that's never a good thing in a distilled spirit. Mm -hmm. Is that what you remember? Yeah. Okay. I was thinking of like kombucha too. Mm. What in what way? I don't know. Isn't kombucha made? Isn't it fermented? I don't or? know anything about kombucha. I don't either. My best friend just likes making it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice contribution. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Do I? Yeah. Read, read that. It's okay. user X. User X Apple X Jack X. Okay. Came to the Whiskey Vault for the review, staying for the life advice. <laughs> we were, you missed this maybe. We were giving dating advice. From you and Rex? Yeah. I feel pretty good about this one though. Cause his fiance was nonstop giving him shit because he wanted to try and slowly sip his whiskey and explore it okay. and instead of shooting it. Yeah. And she was telling him that he was a punk and he was being a little too for prissy because he didn't, wasn't shooting it like a man or like a real drinker does. And we were like, dude, yeah. if she can't handle your whiskey exploration, 
And the only thing she can do is give you shit for not shoveling alcohol down your throat. Like maybe, maybe reconsider that relationship a little. Like she's not encouraging the best parts of you right there. She's sh pushing you down the hardcore drinking path. Yeah. See, that's pretty fair, right? I think that's fair. Yeah. Emma approved. <laughs> what did the rest say? With the new direction of the channel, I have been personally enjoying the relationship slash friendship advice section of the videos. <laughs> I have one question. Will there be a third channel dedicated for life advice? Yes. Uh, Emma's starting it. Are you going to start the third channel? I am. For life advice? Life advice. Like Ann Landers? All right. I can... It's going to be letters to Dear Emma. Dear Emma. Dear Emma. <laughs> Dear Emma. <laughs> um, I could do that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Lord, dude, be careful what you... Oh, I know. Be careful what you... Totally like hitting. All right. Totally killing out. We've Too got, much to do. We've got more things to shoot. You ready okay. to close this up? Okay. Yeah. Your response. So I'll start the closing and we'll switch places on what Rex and I normally do, right? So I will always start the ending with, uh, here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. us. There you go.